This talk is sponsored by Polygon. Polygon is the leading platform for Ethereum scaling and infrastructure development. Its growing suite of products enables developers to build scalable, user-friendly dApps with low transaction fees without ever sacrificing on security. Learn more at polygon.technology. Hi all, my name is Patrick Collins and I am a developer advocate on the Chainlink protocol. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to make you a DeFi quant engineer using Python and using a ton of amazing scripts. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So what I'm gonna be showing you is a little bit of this Aave protocol here. So this is Aave, we're at staging.ave.com. Uh, it's on the Coven test network. You don't have to go ahead and play around with this. You can just watch this for what we're gonna be doing. So Aave is a borrowing and lending protocol which allows us to deposit assets and then borrow assets as well. And you might want to do this so that you could have a leveraged position. You can do some really fancy uh, financial uh, financial tricks, build some financial instruments, um, get some APY, earn some yield. Obviously, it's not going to be you know quite this lucrative because uh, this is just a test net. But these are the types of things that you're going to be able to do. So I'm at staging.avi.com, like I said, on the Coven test net. I'm going to go ahead and practice depositing something. Let's go ahead and pause 0.5 ETH. And this is something that you might want to do so that you can gain some interest on this asset, right? So I'm going ahead and deposit. That transaction is pending. If I go back to my dashboard, it'll still be 1.7 as the transaction is going through, right? We can see it here. And then once it actually goes through, we'll see this number go up to uh, 2.7. 2.2, which we do right there. Awesome. Now that we have some collateral, we can go ahead and actually borrow different assets, right? So you see this number up here, this is our health factor. This tells us how healthy we are. We always need to have more collateral than we do assets borrowed. So right now we have, you know, 5,000 ETH, 5,000, $5,800 of ETH borrowed, and we have eh, maybe a hundred and hundred one dollars of different tokens borrowed. And we can go ahead and see what that borrowing looks like. So I can go ahead and borrow some die. You can even borrow with this sliding factor. Maybe I'm gonna borrow, you know, just 10 die. Stable APY, 3.99, it'll uh, means that our APY, how much interest we pay during the borrowing of this will always be 3.99. Variable means it'll change based off of how well the protocol does. Um, one is this obviously means it'll always be 3.999, but this means that it could spike up to like 11 or something. So we're going to go ahead and borrow 10 die here. We'll go ahead and confirm. And once this goes through on our dashboard, we'll be able to see that borrowed here and we'll see this die number go up. And the reason you see two different dies here is because on test nets, um, sometimes they change token addresses. Um, because it's a test net and they want to like fiddle with stuff. So it doesn't really matter. But see that transaction just went through. Now we're at 110 die brought. And then what you could do is you could take this die, you could go sell it um, for more ETH or some other, you know, or Aave or Maker or Compound or whatever, right? You could use this um, borrowed money to go leverage up on some other asset. Cool. And that's what we're going to do, but we're going to do it programmatically. So we're not going to do it through, through this UI here. Now, I have a video on this um, on my uh, YouTube as well. One goes a little bit more in depth, one goes into kind of like the leveraging, and then one is a little bit more higher level, gonna be similar to what we're doing here. Uh, but these are two other resources you can definitely check out. Uh, additionally, I have everything that we're gonna go through on my GitHub here. So if you ever get lost or you're a little bit confused, definitely be, be feel free to, to uh, check out here. And then one more thing um, as we're going through this. So we're going to be working with the Brownie uh, protocol here. However, a lot of my future videos are, might be with this Apeworks protocol as it matures. Uh, Apeworks is another Pythonic framework uh, that's really cool. And um, I'm really excited to play around with uh, more in the future. So cool. Let's jump in. So I'm in my code editor now, right? It can be any code editor you want. And the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure Brownie dash dash version and Ganache CLI are installed. So we can make sure we do that with Brownie dash dash version and we can do Ganache CLI dash dash version. 
I have instructions for setting these both of these up in my Ave Brownie Pi uh, GitHub repo. But cool. So now that we have that, let's start a new Brownie project with Brownie init. This will create a new Brownie project with a whole bunch of stuff in here. Now, what we're not going to be doing is we're actually not going to be building any smart contracts. We're just going to be interacting with smart contracts. So the way um, that you interact with smart contracts uh, typically is you need to have, you always, always, always need to have two things. What are those two things? Well, at least two things. You need to have the ABI and the address. Those are always, always, always the two things you need to do to interact with them. I mean, obviously, you're going to need an ETH connection, which we're going to be using Alchemy, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but you always need an ABI and an address. And for us, the way we get an ABI, the way we get the ABI of these smart contracts that are on Avalanche is we can just use an interface and compile it down. Now, if you go to the Ave docs, which again, you know, all these links are in that GitHub repo, um, it links right to those ABIs. So if you come to the docs, you might get put on V3 first. Uh, we're going to still be interacting with V2. However, all the, uh, everything's basically the same, right? All the interact, all the fundamentals are going to be basically the same. Now, the main interface that we're going to be using is this I lending pool interface. This has all the different functions that we need and all the different functions that we just demoed. It does borrow, it does withdraw, or, or excuse me, deposit, borrow, withdraw, repay, you know, everything you would need, you, you'd think about for borrowing and lending. Uh, but notice this right here, lending pool methods, deposit, borrow, withdraw, and repay are only for ERC-20. If you want to do this with native ETH or Matic or, you know, whatever, use WETH gateway instead. Now. We're actually just going to make it easier. We're going to uh, convert Ethereum to WETH so that we can just use these, you know, we can pretend like this Ethereum's uh, your typical ERC-20, but you could also use this WETH gateway uh, if you'd prefer, right? So you'd have deposit ETH, withdraw ETH, repay, you know, F, et cetera. But for us, we're just going to be wrapping our Ethereum. Cool. So we need this interface. Let's grab it. We'll copy it. New file. I lending pool dot soul. Based in it. Did I spell that right? I lending pool. Yes, it did. Okay, cool. And then if you're using like a VS code linter, you can ignore this for now. Um, this is something that the, the lint linters are working on. Brownie is able to compile with different versions of Solidity. So you can ignore that. Additionally, this I lending pool addresses provider. So this is an interface that will give us the different addresses for different pools and different things that we need to work with. So back in here, we're going to say new file, I lending pool addresses provider.sol, paste that in. Boom. Okay, cool. Two interfaces down. What else do we need? Well, we're probably going to need an ERC-20 interface, right? Because we're working with ERC-20 tokens. Now, I already have these. Uh, um, so I'm not going to go ahead and find some random place. You can go, just go ahead, copy paste these off of my GitHub, right? If we go to irc 20soul copy this whole thing and then paste it in or create irc 20soul Boom. We have something like this. Additionally, we're going to need a WETH token or a uh, wrapped Ethereum, which again, I have on my GitHub already. So you can just copy paste it from there. And the reason we're going to need a WETH token is because this has a deposit and a withdrawal function that we need. In order to transform your Ethereum to an ERC-20 version of Ethereum or wrapped Ethereum, you need to deposit in a WETH token contract. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. All right. So we have the main interfaces that we need. There's going to be one more interface that we're going to need, but we'll save that for a little bit. So let's go ahead and start creating our script. Create a, create a new file called Ave, borrow.py. And we're also going to create one called get west.py. And then we're going to do knit.py. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is since we're going to be working with wrapped Ethereum, we're going to need to learn how to get wrapped Ethereum from Ethereum. So we're going to do that in this get west script. So in here, we're going to create the bottom, we're going to do def main. Oops. And this is going to call get with. Great. 
Then at the top, we're going to do def get width. And this is where we're going to do all of our stuff, right? So maybe we'll do print hi, just to make sure it's working. Run brownie, run scripts, uh, get width.py. Oh, and I think it actually will fail. So it actually fails. I actually didn't copy paste from my GitHub. You should. You'll get a different error than me. <laughs> Um, so this is copying right from the Ave repository. What we want to do is we want to import from the Ave repository. Right now this says, hey, import from our local place, which obviously doesn't work. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy my iLending pool from my GitHub, which has kind of this already transformed for us. iLending pool address providers. Yep. Okay. I did do that one correct. Okay, cool. Now the only thing that we need to do here is our compiler doesn't know what Ave slash contracts is. So we need to tell it where to import this from. So the way we do that is we'll create brownie config.yaml. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create some dependencies. Dependencies. And our dependencies are going to be on the Ave slash protocol v2 at 1.0.0. So we're going to import from GitHub if I just go to GitHub and I even just paste that right there, we're telling Brownie, hey, grab from this repo at tag 1.0.0. And then once we have that, we can do something called remappings. So we'll say compiler, sulk, remap, mappings. And we'll say anytime you see at Ave in a contract, you're really mean. Ave slash protocol call pro to call v2 at 1.0.0. Cool. Now we can even try with Brownie compile first. Make sure everything compiles. Yay. Stuff's compiled. And then we'll try running the script, which should just say hello or something or hi. Launch guess. There's going to be, it's going to launch a fake blockchain that does nothing and says hi. Okay. Perfect. Let's get some weth now. Now to get an account, that is actually part of your, your wallet that's actually associated with your MetaMask. You do something like this with your private key. Feel free to see the repo for that. For us, we're just going to use kind of a built-in fake account that Brownie gives us. So at the top, we're just going to say from Brownie import accounts. And this is going to be account that we use. We're going to say account equals accounts of zero. So Brownie just gives us kind of this fake account for us to use. Now in our get with, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the with token. So we're going to say with equals interface. And we're going to import interface from Brownie as well. Interface dot with interface. And we're going to say config networks network dot show active with token. Now to do this, we're going to need to import network from here as well. And what we're saying here is we're saying go to our config, which we're going to have to grab as well, and grab the WEF token address from our config and use this from our WEF interface. Use this ABI. We'll now have like a WEF ABI that we can send transactions from. We're going to have to create a new networks. Mainnet fork. with token, and then we're gonna have to put an address in here. Oops. You can just go ahead and copy this from my GitHub repo again, instead of actually uh, looking up where the with token address is. Now, what's interesting here is we're using this mainnet fork network. So we want to simulate everything that's happening on the blockchain. We want to simulate this with this mainnet fork network, instead of having to run everything on a fake network or a test network where things are going to cost a lot of money. So we're going to be using this mainnet fork. So if you run Brownie Networks list, you'll see you should have a mainnet fork uh, in your development networks. If you don't have it, just go ahead and upgrade to a new um, uh, to the newest version of Brownie. Um, but once you have that in, we're actually going to be using Alchemy as our provider here. And so you can just go on to Alchemy, you can sign up for a new account, and you can go ahead and hit view key, and it'll give you an HTTP endpoint. And with that, you can do Brownie Networks modify, 
we're going to modify the mainnet fork and we're going to say the forking URL is going to be, and then, you know, you'll paste in your forking URL and hit enter. I've already done it. So I'm not going to do that here, but now you'll have a way to connect to our mainnet fork with this. And in fact, we can even do a little, we can even check it. We can say print with dot balance of account. See how much width we have. We should have zero, right? So if we're going brownie networks, or excuse me, brownie run scripts, get wet dot pi, uh, dash dash network mainnet fork. That's what we got to do. Now you see it's forking here. I'm going to cover this up and we see our balance here is zero. Perfect. So now in our config, we're going to give us a default network of mainnet fork so that now we just always go to mainnet fork and we don't have to pass that network flag anymore. Okay, great. So now we have a way to connect. We have a way to get print our balance. Let's even do TX equals with dot deposit. We'll say from count value. Oh, this should be in parentheses. Value is going to be zero. It's actually going to be, we're going to say, we're going to do from web three, import web three. We're going to say web three dot two way 0 0.1 ether. We're saying we're going to deposit 0 0.1 ether. Um, with this transaction here, we're going to call the deposit function. We're going to send it from our fake account that Brownie gives us. Oh, and, and Brownie gives us this fake account and has like a thousand ETH in it already. Uh, we're going to deposit one 0 0.1 ether. And we do it like this because uh, Ethereum can't understand decimals. So we have to wrap it down like this, which that's equal to doing like, you know, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, 17 zeros with that. Cool. Once we call this deposit, we can even do, we'll do a tx.wait. So we'll wait for the transaction to be mined uh, with one block. And now we'll print the balance and we should get 0 0.1. Let's run this again. Cool. So we do indeed see that right here. And if we count those zeros, it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's exactly what we want, right? Cool. So we're getting weth. Awesome. So now we have a way to get some weth. Now that we get some weth, let's actually deposit it into Aave so that we can borrow some stuff. Let's do it. Okay. So let's create a main function, def main. And this main function will call borrow, uh, or excuse me, deposit. Actually, yeah, we'll have a call deposit and borrow. Now we'll do def deposit, or excuse me. Yeah, now we'll create our def deposit and borrow. Great, so now we have a function, def to borrow and boss, uh, deposit and borrow, and that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get an account. So we'll say accounts equals, or excuse me, account equals accounts zero. Same thing that we did in the beginning. We'll do from brownie import accounts. And again, in my GitHub repo, I do it a little bit different. Um, but that's because I do it a little bit different in here, but that's because I, I give, I wrap it in this get account thing. I give it the ability to, uh, mess around and, uh, and use, um, not just main and forks or test nets. So account equals account zero. And now we're going to need to get our, our WETH token address. So we'll say WETH token address equals again config we already did this network network dot show active wet token right same thing we did before and we'll say if network dot show active in main net fork we'll go ahead and run get wet which we can go ahead and import from our scripts so we'll say from scripts dot get with import get with. So what we're doing here is we're we're getting that with token. 
Uh, we're not using it yet. But now we're saying, you know, hey, if we're on this mainnet fork, just go ahead and get the WEF token, right? Now, that way we don't have to run get WEF if we don't need to. Cool. Once we have the WEF token, that's what we're going to use to deposit into Aave. So in order, to, in order to deposit into Aave, we need to get the lending pool address in the lending pool contract. So we'll say lending pool equals, well, how do we get the lending pool? Oh, we're going to create a function called get lending pool. And you'll see why in a second. So down here, we're going to say def get lending pool. And what this is going to do is we're first going to get the lending pool addresses provider from that I lending pool addresses provider interface. So we're going to say interface the I lending pool address says provider. It's going to be from config networks. Oops. Network dot show active lending pool address provider. Right like that. So this means again, we're going to have to go back in our config, create a new address called lending pool address provider. And we can find this config, or excuse me, we can find this address in the Aave docs. Uh, but for speed here, <laughs> you can just find it uh, right in my brownie config.yaml, right? So if you go to main to fork, lending pool address provider, boom, main to forks right there. Boom, same one right here. Okay, cool. The reason that we need this and we wrap it like this. So now we have this lending pool address provider contract is because we need to call a function on it. We need to call get lending pool. So we can say lending pool address provider dot get lending pool. And this will tell us the address of the lending pool. So we'll say lending pool address equals lending pool address dot get lending pool. And then we're going to wrap this address in that interface. So we're going to say a lending pool equals interface dot lending pool of the lending pool address. And then we're going to return the lending pool, return lending pool. And boom, now we have a lending pool. This is going to be the contract we're going to bor uh, borrow stuff from deposit to et cetera, et cetera. Great. So in order to deposit anything, we need to approve our ERC 20 first right? So we need to approve our WEF token. Um, we need to approve our WEF token. So we're going to create a function called approve your uh, approve WEF. And we're going to give it an amount to approve. We'll give it the lending pool dot address, the address of who to approve it. Um, the we we'll give it the WEF token address. And then we'll also uh, pass the account. So we have lending pool, we have web token address, we have account, we just need a mount. We'll make this at the top. Probably should be all caps, but for purpose of time, we're not going to do that. We're going to say amount equals web three uh, dot two way 0 0.1 ether. Or um, yeah, we'll do 0 0.1 ether. So again, we got to do from web three import. Web3. Cool. So we're going to deposit all of our WEF. We're going to deposit all of our WEF. And we got to approve it first. So we say def approve WEF. So this is going to take all these variables. So I'm actually just going to copy, paste it down here. So we're going to say uh, amount, lending pool address, WEF token address, account. Um, oh, actually, we don't even need to pass an amount. Well, let's pass an amount. Now let's not pass it amount because amount's kind of global and that's going to be really confusing. So we're, we're just going to not, we're going to keep amount as global, which is a little confusing, but it's fine. So a lending pool address, wet token account. And we'll even do a quick print. We'll say approving WEF three. We'll say ERC 20 or WEF equals interface dot IERC 20. Uh, we could also just do, um, I WEF, but uh, if you want to make it kind of with any ERC20, you could just do interface.irc20. We'll pass in that WEF token address, and then we'll say TX equals uh, WEF.approve. 
Lending pool, address, amount from account. So we're going to approve the lending pool address to use our with, and then we'll do tx.wait one, we'll print approved. Boom. And now we have a function to approve our with. What do we do after we approve it? Well, we're probably going to want to deposit it. So now we'll do a quick print. We'll do print deposit. And we'll do lending pool dot deposit. Oops. We're going to just call that deposit function right here. We'll say TX equals lending pool dot deposit. We're going to do the WETH token address. Amount account dot address at zero. Uh, so if we look at the deposit documentation, right? If we go back to, excuse me, the lending pool here, we can go to deposit. We can see it takes an address of the asset to deposit, the amount of the asset deposit on behalf of, and then a refer code, which is just here right now. So address, amount on behalf of, which is us, and then zero. Um, cool. And then we're gonna do from, of course, it's gonna be our account. I can actually close that for now. Cool. We're going to do tx.wait for one block confirmation. And then it's going to be done. Now I'm going to create a function called get user data. And what it's going to do is going to return all the user's data from Ave. So we'll create this function def get user data. And we're going to call it right after this. We're going to do get user data. And there's a function on this lending pool called get user account data, which returns a whole bunch of stuff. You know, what's your health factor? How much money you have borrowed? How much, you know, money in ETH you have deposited? All this stuff. So in this get user data function, we're going to say lending pool dot get user account data. We'll say account dot address. And so this will pass this uh, an account. And we'll pass it lending pool. And then from this, we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to copy paste it because it's quicker. Uh, but you can actually see what it returns. Total collateral, total debt, build to borrow. You know, feel free to pause this, of course. Uh, liquidation threshold, TLV, and health factor. You can read up on what those are in the docs. Uh, but once we have those, we'll do a couple of print statements. So we'll just do print. Do printf, you have, we'll say web three dot from way total, oh, look at that, total collateral, eth, ether, total collateral, we'll do it again, we'll do total debt, eth, ether, eth debt, one more, and this will be available borrow. ETH to borrow. So it tells us how much collateral we have, how much debt we have, and how much ETH we can borrow. And if we run this script right now with get user data, and then what are we passing? Lending pool and account. Now, if we run this with brownie run scripts, avibar.py, and we don't have to do the network flag, right? Because because we have the default network defined in our config here. If we just run this like this, it'll spin up, config not defined. I should probably define config, network, maybe some other stuff, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and run this. And it should tell us what's going on here. We also got to grab interface. Hopefully nothing else. This should be I lending pool, not lending pool. Approved. Okay, here we go. Approved. Now we're depositing. Great. You have zero one ETH collateral. You have no debt, and you can borrow zero point eight two five. You'll notice you can't borrow exactly how much collateral you have. Right, you can check the Ave docs, you can check uh, on chain to see 
kind of what that conversion looks like because not all assets are one to one, right? You can only borrow up to uh, 82.5% uh, if you have ETH uh, as collateral, right? So that how, that is how that works. Great. All right, cool. So we have some stuff deposited. Yay. And actually this get user data function, we're going to need to know how much we can borrow because we're going to return a float of uh, available borrow ETH and a float of total debt ETH. So we're going to return both of these. Oops. So back in here in our function, we're going to say available borrow ETH. And then total debt ETH equals get user. So uh, first thing we're going to need, need to do, let's say we want to borrow some die, right? And we're going to borrow die. So we're going to say, we're going to say uh, die price equals get die price, right? Or I have like get asset price in my GitHub repo, but we need a way to actually get this die price. And the reason we need to get the die price is because we need to convert from die to ETH so we know how much um, we can actually borrow. So we're going to say def get die price. We're going to say die f price feed equals interface dot aggregator v3 interface config. And don't worry if you don't know what's going on for a second. Networks. Network show, dot show active, die ETH price feed. Boom. So we're going to get a chain link price feed that gets the conversion of die and ETH. And this comes from an aggregator of V3 interface that we don't have yet. So you can either grab this um, from the from docs.chain.link, or you can just go right to my GitHub repo, uh, which has it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to paste it right in here. Boom. Aggregator V3 interface. These are a decentralized price feed for us to get our um, pricing information from. Cool. So now that we have the die ETH price feed, oh, and we also need the die ETH price feed address on mainnet. So let's get that. Again, uh, you can go look it up on the Chainlink docs, or for now, uh, just copy it from my repo. Boom, and that's gonna be the price feed there. But if you wanna find the docs, you'd go to you know EVM chains, contract addresses, Ethereum data feeds, and we're looking for the price of die ETH. And boom, that's it right there, right? You can see all these, oh, that's on Coven. Well, it's a good thing I checked, huh? We're looking for the main one, die ETH, boom, which is this address right here. So we'll paste that in here. Cool. Once we have that, we can now call and get the latest price. We can say latest price equals die ETH price feed dot latest round data one. Uh, latest round data returns a list of things and we're just gonna, the first one is actually the latest price. And then we're just gonna return that. We're gonna say return latest price, boom. So now that we have that, we can even do print die price. We see if we're getting that correctly from the chain link price feeds. And boom, we're saying it's 0 0.0003 die per one ETH, which is probably right, right? Die is gonna be a lot cheaper uh, than what ETH is. So now that we have the, the die price and we have the amount available to borrow, we can actually go ahead and do a borrow. So let's say, let's get the amount ERC, uh, amount of die to borrow. It's gonna be equal to, and this is where we gotta do a little bit of math. So we're gonna say one divided by the web three dot from way die price from ether times borrowable ETH 
that we have. And then just for a safety measure, we're going to do times it by 0 0.95 um, so that we have a little bit less than the max number, right? Because again, if the price changes a little bit and we borrowed the max, we could get liquidated. So we're just going to want to uh, be a little be a little bit cautious here. It's going to be available, borrow ETH. And then we're actually going to web3. Uh, from way that as well. Just so that all the math makes a little bit more sense here. So basically, we're converting um, the ETH to amount of DAI we can borrow. So we can even do like print amount DAI to borrow, and just as a sanity check, see if this number looks about right. So this is going to be the amount of DAI we want to borrow here with 0 0.1 ETH as collateral. Then we need to wrap this as a float. And we need to wrap this as a float because the numbers are too big. And cool. So it's saying around 206 die, which makes sense. Like one tenth of the current price of ETH, which is like 2,700, is going to be 206, right? So we can even do a quick. Or actually, this is going to be 0.82 or 8 percent of. Uh, you get the picture. This this is uh this is about correct. So let's go ahead and borrow this, right? So that's how much we want to borrow. Now we're going to want to borrow that ERC20. So we'll do borrow ERC20. We'll say we'll put in the lending pool for some function. We'll say amount die to borrow, and then we'll pass the account. And we'll create a new function called def bar year 20. And then we'll pass those exact parameters here. And great. And we'll do px equals lending pool dot borrow. And again, you can see the ABI in the, in the Ave docs. But we're going to say uh, we need, actually, we need the address too. So we'll say, Give me die address, and then borrow your C20. We'll do die address. We'll say die address equals this. We put this in our config too. Die address. You could look up the mainnet die address if you want, or just copyright from copyright from my um, GitHub. The address equals config. Networks, network does show active die token. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, TX equals lending pool dot borrow. We'll say the die address. Uh, we'll do the amount to borrow. And since right now the amount to borrow is in not web three way, or excuse me, in, in the web three format, we'll do web three dot two way, comma ether. One, zero. So the one, again, if we go back to the lending pool here, we go to borrow. We have the address of the asset, the amount, the interest rate mode, uh, which I believe one is variable. Referral code, which is just gonna be zero, and then address behalf of is gonna be account. And then of course, we're gonna say from count. And then we just do tx.wait. One. Print. Yay. Borrowed. Yep, need a parenthesis there. Great. And then after this, we're just going to run this get user data function again, and it'll tell us we've got a whole bunch of stuff borrowed. So and this is going to be the whole thing. We're gonna run through, we're gonna approve, we're gonna deposit. Oh, and I ran into an issue here. Die token. So this is gonna be config. Oops, die token. Let's run this one more time. T 
So it's going to tell us that we've got stuff deposited, that we can borrow stuff now. And cool. And now at the end, it says, okay, we have 0 0.1 ETH as collateral. And we've actually gained a little bit of money, right? Because as you deposit, you gain a little bit of interest. And we have almost 0 point, you know, that 0.82 in debt, but it's 0 0.78. This is the die that we have in debt in terms of ETH. And this is how much more ETH we could borrow, right? And if we waited longer, right? Um, if we waited some time, that interest would have been even more, right? Because the interest increases over time. So this is how uh, you can actually kind of run these Python functions and you can do DeFi right in Python without actually having to deploy any smart contracts or anything. Now, if you go to my GitHub, we do a little bit more things and we, including we actually repay it back. Um, but this is basically how you can get started doing um, all these fantastic things and actually working with Chainlink, working with Avi, working with these DeFi protocols for your quantitative engineering journey. Thank you. We'll see you next time.